Welcome back, Acron fans, to another exhibition match. This is Shadow 53, bringing you a match between Jericho and Cybernetic Pony on Twilight of the Elders. Now, Twilight of the Elders, not a map we have seen in a very long time. It, so I therefore I shall go over it. See, the player starts are in the southwest where Jericho is, and the northeast where Cybernetic Pony is. Cybernetic Pony quickly going for CISO. Northwest has a very large expansion and a dozen crates, split half and half by type. While the south and east have half size expansions compared to that, and there's a couple of crates in the middle on each side, between each base. And the rest of it is just a bunch of hills and... Well, not exactly hills, but obstacles, we'll say. Well, actually, I suppose it doesn't really matter. It's meant to be a crashed Grecum ship. If you play the campaign, it kind of makes sense, but didn't want to spoil it. However, it's been years, so you probably have played through it, or if you care, you played through it. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony very quickly going for four importers! Infantry Rush! That... Well, that's a thing. I would have gone for a second army, mind you. I would have replaced one of those importers with an army just so you can get the throughput that you need for the infantry. They don't build that quickly. Oh, actually, wait, no. Hold on. No, never mind, they do build that quickly. So actually, yeah, four importers to an army isn't a bad... That's not a bad ratio. While Jericho with Grecum going for quick octos and going for more of an economic build on a map like this, given its size and the rush distance, that's not entirely surprising. However, the rush path is direct, which means its rush distance isn't necessarily as big as the diagonal size would lead one to believe. And Jericho, realizing that as well, he is actually going for an assault of his own. Or... Oh, I see. He had echoed out an assault. So he has... He sent out an assault before turning those into economic octos, which might deflect Cybernetic Pony's attack. I mean, it should, it will stop his attack and it might cause him to rethink his entire strategy. Those are, we'll find out now, I suppose. The Cybernetic Pony not actually building anything with the importers. He has four reserves. He can start building infantry, and he's going to want to start building infantry now. I think they take about ten seconds to build each, which means he's going to want to build them now, since importers take forty-seven seconds to get a reserve. And there we go, starting to build some infantry. Okay, it's a little more than 10 seconds for, se for special ops. I think it's more like 20 seconds for them. And now getting more reserves once again. So he's... He is streaming out the infantry. Sending more and more, but Jericoon... It's hard to tell if he's going to discourage his strategy, because I think at this point, Cybernetic Pony knows that Jericoon was echoing out those Octos. That that was a feint, and that really Jericoon's going for an economic opener. Cybernetic Pony does not appear to be at all deterred in his infantry opener, that's going to be rather scary. I think Jericho might have quite a lot to contend with now if Cybernetic Pony does not stream them in. That's the one thing. Though. Cybernetic Pony should be moving them more as a large group rather than three at a time. If he streams them in as a three at a time, they are not going to be able to deal a whole lot of damage. The only advantage they'll have is their range. Octos are tougher and more powerful in direct damage, but they actually have to get into range to do damage. They're also more expensive, though not by a whole lot. I mean, consider the cost of importers, the amount of time it takes to get the resources from importers. So Jericho could definitely build up a lot of Octos to deal with them, and, of course, stand up these two units here if he needs to, but he might not want to. And if he really felt threatened, he could just cancel half of these RPs and use those Octos to attack directly, or to defend. Severing so Point, however, is doing exactly what I suggested. He is keeping his units more or less in position, holding position, to wait for everything to group up. Right now, though, a little bit surprising, he's not building up more more units at all. He's He has the reserves for it. He could actually build a second armor if he wanted to, or build a factory, which not, which wouldn't be a bad idea. Back to the 136 mark, he's keeping some of his at home. Keeping a marine at home, probably going to start building up more RPs for when he actually has more infantry to defend with, because this is not going to work in the long term, but as a short-term opener, it isn't a terrible idea. It's just risky. It's something that... It's only going to work because... Well, okay, now this Octopod's here. It probably won't work at all. This Octopod's going to probably t tear apart everything. I say probably because no one ever goes for this, this much infantry. And therefore, it's kind of hard to tell. But the infantry are out of position. These three back here need to go forward. Otherwise, it's going to be done. Severing Pony about two minutes down from where Jericho is. 247 mark. Grouping his, his infantry instead at that midway point. Rather than grouping them up right in front of the base here. Because the Octopod isn't going to be able to take care of any of them in two or three hits. Which means they are not going to be able to do anything to it. 
Cybernetic Pony is wise to have his units group instead here. And also kind of wise to be saving his money for actually building up RPs. That is a really good idea. He wants to build more, he'll want to build more RPs and transition into factories from here. For this map, an infantry heavy all-in is not a good idea. While Jay Raccoon is continuing to press on with his Octopod, also expanding to the south, keeping this as a nice distraction while he's building up his economy. So Jay Raccoon really has the late game advantage here. And that's what I'm saying, saying Cybernetic Pony needs to build some RPs and to transition because he probably won't last. He's building an army right in front of Jericho's base. He should probably build it over here instead, because Jericho is not going to get that on a direct path, and from here they'll still be able to attack directly, or up on the tentacle itself. Then he have not much issue, but no, he's going right in front of there, which means Jericho will find it without actually having to look. Or he probably will find it without having to look. He's actually gone a bit too far south. Jericho going completely the wrong direction. Cybernetic Pony gets lucky. This is getting lucky, he, the fact that he doesn't see this armory right here. That's not a good place to put it regardless. But it looks like Jeracoon might see it anyway from the looks for the 610 mark. Jeracoon has spotted it, he knows that it's there. From his point of view, we are watching it and he's fully aware that this armory is present. While Cybernetic Pony has all of his units up to the northeast, he's not attacking yet. But this army, like I said, in a bad spot. Cybernetic Pony should abort it, or should go back before it's built. I think it's around here it was built. And build it over here, or up here. That's where it should be built. Not here. It's just too obvious for Jericoon. So, Jericoon able to destroy it a minute after it's built. He has another octopus, but actually, maybe not. Maybe going around here, I should say, when going up to here, you'll want to go around the outside, this ramp up here, and then go around onto this section. From there, he'd be able to build an army and go right down. But from the center of the map, it's not going to work. And now the Autobot's coming up to attack Cybernetic Pony. Cybernetic Pony is actually taking the initiative on his own, trying to stop the armory from being destroyed, and able to get rid of that Autobot with only minimal losses. Now he does have quite a few infantry. He should... He's better equipped to deal with this. However, J. Raccoon's main base is going to be heavily defended. He has enough Autobots to not worry too much about it. One Autobot at a time will have a hard time, but groups of Autobots won't. Like I said, it's two or three hits to kill an infantry for an Octopod. And those two or three hits are going to be very easy to deliver if you have two or three Octobots in a group. That's one shot, one volley of all of them is going to kill an infantry. So they'd have to survive long enough for all those, or they'd have to kill the Octobots fast enough before basically, well, even just half a dozen volleys go off and they're all dead. Because the rest of them won't be able to kill the Octobots in time. So Cybernetic Pony jumping around. Double checking this army actually comes into existence, able to defend it from the looks of it pretty well, but, but Jericoon continuing to re-micro, trying to avoid getting hit, keeping his Octopod away from the infantry coming in so he has the advantage of time, if nothing else. And then Armory looks like ultimately it will be going down. As Cybernetic Pony, from his point of view, he's... well, he's fighting where the Octopod was, but the Octopod moved down further south, which means he's probably will, will be able to destroy it ultimately, it's just not going to be easy. And Cybernetic Pony not changing up a strategy in his main base, continuing to build up a bunch of infantry, no RPs and nothing beyond this. It's really kind of surprising. And what's also kind of surprising, though not entirely, is that he's not building infantry from both armories at the same time. He's instead queuing up a bunch of, a bunch of infantry, and by the way, this is money that he could be using elsewhere. He could have another armory or two, actually, up here, with the money that he's spending on the infantry, on the marines. I realize that they are only 8 liquid crystal each, but that's 24 liquid, well, A16 now liquid crystal. But still, with the amount of money he has in the bank, that could do it, actually. But no, he is just queuing up instead. That's generally a bad idea. It's a bad idea in any game where you spend money for your units immediately, which Akron is one of. Now, J. Raccoon, on the other hand, doesn't have to worry about that being that he's playing Grekham. He can just build up as many units as he wants at the same time, and they will all complete simultaneously. But really, what he doesn't have to worry about is the fact that he has enough Octopods to defend against anything that comes in. Anything at all. It doesn't matter what comes in, he is going to defend it. Or at least we shall see. He should be able to defend it just fine. The Reef's healing up. That support there will help. And Cyber Pony continuing on this one trick. The infantry, and it's... Well, it's getting kind of scary, but it's something that, if it starts going down, it's going to be over. That's his only... That's the only thing he's going for. It's the only strategy, and I'm a little bit surprised at that. 
Now Jericoon continuing to build up his Octopods. Two of them are just about complete as Cybernetic Pony begins his assault. And the Octopods able to get rid of one of the infantry for free. Another Special Ops will be going down pretty much for free as well. If these Octopods get into range at least. And now the battle starts in earnest. One of the Octopods actually is going down fairly quickly. Jericho needs to get his other Octopods in position. But the infantry are going down quickly enough that it almost doesn't matter. Like I said, with three Octopods, a single volley gets rid of a single infantryman. And all of the Special Ops down. The Marines are going down fairly soon after. And that's going to be it. The Reeves healing up what they can. Although the Marine damage potential is quite high. They actually are taking out quite a few of the Octopods. So that wasn't a bad assault in terms of the number of Octopods destroyed. But for cost, that's a lot of time that's wasted. I mean, at this point, Jericho can just rebuild Octopods and go for a counterattack. And he has enough money. He has more than enough money to do that. You get a couple Octopods right now and very quickly get an another handful. And Cybernetic Pony has basically lost the game. His main assault going down pretty much without too much effort. Losing three Octopods. Not great, but not terrible when you consider the amount of infantry that were destroyed in the process. So like I said, not much hope for those infantry against the Octopods. Jericoon really... If he rebuilds his Octopods and goes for a counterattack, he's won this game. That's that's it. He just needs to rebuild, or build up a few more Octopods and go for a counterattack. Cyberman Pony will not be able to build up an army of infantry in time to deal with those Octopods. If he builds up factories, he'll be in better condition. But this close to the Unplayable Past, there's basically no reason he'd be able to do that. So Jericoon, instead going for further economy... Looks like he's just continuing to push for the late game. That's rather surprising. Not a terrible idea. I just wouldn't... I would just end the game myself right now because he can. But instead, no. Going for economy. Possibly going for gate tech. Or chronoporting, rather. Given the amount of money he has. So he needs advanced structures first. But he might be going for that. Or going for advanced structures. Then air units. Then chronopore back pods. Not a terrible idea, though. There isn't a whole lot to harass other than the, the importers. And that's basically just win the game. And given that Cybernetic Pony has not built anything other than RPs. He's going to RPs and factories right now. But he is really behind. Jericoon has won this game. He just needs to go and claim it. And he is choosing indeed to claim that with Chronoporting. Getting more Octopods instead. Not going for Arians. Just getting Octopods. Probably Chronoporting them back as soon as he gets Chronoporting. And getting more Octos to expand. He still held that South Expansion. Didn't lose anything to that. So continue to build up on that one. That will get him nice extra bit of cash. And from there, being able to build more and more units and chronoport back more and more units as well. He can't chronoport back to deal with this fight that happened before. So that's not worth doing. But what he can do is just attack and chronoport back in case anything happens in the meantime while he's attacking. Go for just an unplayable pass attack. Just an uppercut. Straight up uppercut. That will finish him off. Lancer's coming in. Not a terrible idea. One Lancer coming in, though. It's going to... It's not going to give itself away. Just here to protect the Marine... It's not going in for an attack yet. The Octopods, however, are not that bad against air units. The Lancer won't last particularly long, and especially with Chronoporting being researched, that Lancer is up too late. Simple matter. fact of the matter is, that Lancer is not coming in quickly enough to even matter, and he would need several of them. Really, Tornads would be the way to go, not Lancers. Lancers don't hit ground units powerfully enough for the Octopods to be destroyed in time. The front Armory gone down, and... Cybernetic Pony only has his main base with his factory and armory here. That's all he has. Oops. That's all he has. This Lancer is at the... Well, at when Jericoon is focused, it's not being useful at all. Jericoon had Chronoport by these Octopods to deal with the armory before it even dealt with... Well, before having to deal with anything else. So those Octopods getting rid of the armory in the Unplayable Pass. There's nothing that can be done about that. The Lancer not able to deal with that at all and just going back to base... Getting machinery is the thing to do. Which surprises me that he's not doing so. Though Cybernetic Pony doesn't have the resources to really build that up. He, like I said, he needs... He really has to worry about how his resources are set up. And Jericoon, having Chronoporting now, he is going to win. There's no way about There's no way about it. There's nothing that Cybernetic Pony can build up fast enough. For him to be able to counter that Chronoporting. His only hope would be Tornads. And he doesn't have machinery. He doesn't have the money for machinery. He doesn't have really any money at all. And he's only getting Liquid Crystal. He's basically done for. Now, if he, he sees that there's Chronoporting that's been researched. That Chronoporting is there. Don't know what he's going to do about that, other than surrender. <laughs> Probably going to fight Valiantly, see if he can get rid of the Octopods before they deal too much damage, but 
once Jericho gets into the main base or even near the main base. At the 1250 mark, right now Jericho is going towards that base. Cybernetic Point is about 10 seconds down from there. Won't be able to do much about it, and more reefs coming. Why is Jericho building so many reefs? That's bizarre. He doesn't need to have that much healing. He's not going to get attacked in return. Cybernetic Pony has nothing to do. Though he is getting a Spire, probably going to get some Seppi Pods, and that will be able to get rid of the Lancers without any problem. So the Lancers will be going down. And Jericho coming in with the Octopod. A Chronoport is likely to happen soon. Octopod getting rid of one of the Marines and starting to deal with the Lancers. Able to get rid of the Lancers. Like I said, Lancers do not have enough anti-ground damage without aerospace upgrade for them to actually deal with Octopods at all well. ATHCs might have been a bit better, but even then, it's just... Get machinery. Get machinery and build it from them. But Firebots coming in. j Raccoon cannot lose this game. With the amount of Firebots being built up, there is no way he can lose this game. He's... Well, he's actually getting... His resources will only last him another minute or so, but still. Cybernetic Pony jumping back to... The 13-13 mark, and... Did j Raccoon attack his own base? Aw, he's... I'm not sure why he's attacking his own Farobod like that. He might be trying to do a Permaclone trick, but... Yeah, I don't... That's bizarre. Probably a mistake. Anyhow, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that Cybernetic Pony has no way out of this. But he's doing a Valiant job against the Octopods. Still, the Octopods just coming in here. No Chrono Party even being done yet. Jericho hasn't even Chrono his units yet. But he will pretty soon. Sending in his... Army of Pharopods. Army of Treasonous Pharopods, I should say. And the Octopods. There we go. There's that Chronoport I was looking for. And that will get rid of everything, helping out the... Wait, does Octopod get Chrono... I think the Octopod just got Chrono Fragged. It's a little bit hard to tell, but I think it got Chrono Fragged in the process. No, however, Cybernetic Pony has surrendered, as I thought he would. So that is second game for tonight. Be back shortly with another one, so stay tuned.